rise as we bring the light of Christ into our worship. This is the day the Lord has made. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for being present in our worship. Thank you, God, for being worthy of our worship. Thank you, God, as we gather today to lift up your holy name, to bring you all honor, glory, and praise that you are with us. In Jesus' mighty and powerful name, amen. Bless and do not curse them. 
Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the low, lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought of what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but by overcome evil with good. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson is from Matthew, chapter 16, beginning with the 21st verse. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. And on the third day he raised and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. 
Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the gospel of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Thanks be to God. So if you remember last week, Peter got it right. In our message last week, when Jesus said, Who do you say that I am? Peter got it right. Peter said, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And then they continue on their journey. And after Jesus' disciples declared him to be the Messiah, after Peter spoke so boldly as Peter has been known to do, Jesus then tells them, what will happen to him and how that will happen to him all of the things that will happen you see when peter claimed jesus as the messiah he had a different idea of what the messiah would be doing in the coming days perhaps he thought he'd be a warrior king and totally annihilate the romans oppressors perhaps he thought that jesus would reign in power the way the Roman emperor did. But we know that that's not how the Messiah came to save the lost, the frightened, those who were hurting and those who needed a savior. Jesus didn't come as a warrior king to crush the oppressors of the Roman Empire the way humans thought it should happen. No, Jesus came to die for sinners. It doesn't make much sense. Here he was just proclaimed as the Messiah and he told them, do not say anything. Because you see, the crucifixion had to take place for them to fully understand what it meant that Jesus Christ, Jesus, Christ is the Messiah. So whenever Jesus is telling his closest friends what's going to happen from that day on, that he was going to Jerusalem and he was going to be killed there, hung on a Roman cross, and die for the sins of all God created, Peter would have none of it. He couldn't fathom such a sacrifice, I'm sure. And he said, Lord, God, forbid it. Don't let this happen to you. You are a hope. You are a salvation. You are who we have been waiting for for so long, and yet you're telling us this is where we're headed, and this is what's going to happen to you? I'm thinking you might have missed the part that Jesus would be raised on the third day. You see, we get so caught up in what we think is happening around us. Because our circumstances are so intensely real for us that we miss the message of hope. We miss the message. And I think this may have been what occurred with Peter whenever he said that I would be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter ripped right into this should not happen to you. You are a leader, you are a teacher, we are your followers. How could this happen to you? And if it happens to you, what's going to happen to us? I mean, just imagine. So Jesus tells him, get behind me, Satan. So the get behind me part means follow me. 
If you get that relationship between following Jesus and getting behind Jesus. Satan is the stumbling block. For you are setting your mind on, not on the divine, but on human things. You see, Jesus knew Peter's heart completely. Jesus knew how much Peter loved Jesus and how much Peter believed in Jesus and how much Peter knew who Jesus was. But Peter, in his humanness, didn't want it to be God's way, didn't want it to be God's will, didn't want what Jesus said would happen to him. So Jesus rebuked him and said, get behind me. If you are my follower, these are the things you must do. And that's what Jesus said to his disciples. If anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. You see, they knew what that image of carrying their cross would look like because they had seen numerous prisoners of the Roman Empire carry their crosses to their death. And Jesus was telling them, you must take up your cross and follow me. Meaning, you can't have it your way. It has to be God's way. Life, death, eternity, salvation, hope, love, all of the wonderful things that God provides has to be provided God's way. We can't pick and choose. You see, if we are disciples of Jesus Christ, it's a choice. It's a choice we must make. We must decide to follow Jesus every single day. It can't be something that we decide one day and forget about the next. If we are following Jesus, are we truly doing what God wills for us in our life? Do we even know what God's will is for us in our life? Jesus goes on to say something that is so foreign to our culture. It says if anybody wants to save their life, they will lose it. But if anybody wants to lose their life for me, it will be saved. Doesn't that sound backwards to us? It shouldn't. Not if we're followers of Jesus Christ. Being a loser for Christ is one of the greatest blessings of being a follower, disciple of Jesus Christ. Where we lose ourselves and our ambition and our wants to what God wants for us. We're as... In Romans, Paul stated that love needs to be genuine. And we're supposed to hate what's evil and hold fast to what is good. You see, they combined with Paul's message and what Jesus was telling his disciples. Our first inclination when somebody hurts us isn't to forgive them. It's not to love them. It's not to treat them with kindness. It's to get even. It's to hurt them back. Is to make them suffer. That's our humanness talking. That's the feeling of being human and wanting to be in control. But God is saying, no. Be kind to those who hate you. Be kind to those who hurt you. Offer those who are hungry water and food. Those who are thirsty. God's way is so different than our human condition allows. And Jesus is lovingly teaching them what it means to be a follower of Jesus. What it means to be a disciple of Jesus. What it means to choose Jesus. Decide to follow Jesus. For if we don't give up ourselves wholly and completely to God's will daily, it's a daily surrender, church. It's not something you do once in a lifetime, and that's it. It's daily. Sometimes, constantly throughout the day, where we have to ask God, God, not my will, but your will be done in order to get through a day. We have this hope, this glorious hope that has been provided to us by our risen Lord and Savior. Don't miss the risen Lord and Savior part. This is where salvation comes from. Our hope in Jesus Christ, our faith in Jesus Christ, knowing without a doubt that Jesus 
died for our sin and rose from the dead has forgiven our sin. When we repent of our sin, our sin is guaranteed to be forgiven. And you know what repent means. It means don't do it anymore. Offer to God, ask God for healing of whatever it is in your life that is keeping you separated from God. And then daily surrender. Decide to follow Jesus, even in small ways throughout your day. And then Jesus goes on to say, For the Son of Man is come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. What do you think that means? There will be judgment and reward. Jesus is that judge. Jesus is the one who offers the gift of salvation and eternal life to all who call on his name. And he says here, truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So some scholars or some interpreters think, okay, so the, the Bible's wrong because those people all die. But the interpretation of that is wrong. What this actually means is that Jesus died on the cross. And there were witnesses that were on this road to Jerusalem with Jesus that saw that happen. And those same witnesses saw him raised from the dead. Those same witnesses saw him, ate fish with him on the beach that Jesus cooked for them. These same witnesses saw the miracles that Jesus had done while they were with them. And they had seen the kingdom of heaven be ushered in by Jesus' sacrificial life, death, and glorious resurrection. They got to see the kingdom because Jesus ushered in the kingdom of God here and now. And we are living in the kingdom of God here and now. Decide to follow Jesus so your life reflects the kingdom of God. Here and now. Thanks be to God for the gift of love that God gives us with each and every day. Don't discredit the power of God's love for all God created and God's love for you. Use that in your life as a plumb line of how to treat others. Love God. Love your neighbor. Decide to follow Jesus. Join me, please, in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And this is our prayer of confession. Will you pray this, please, silently with me? 
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. In the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for this day that you have gifted us with this morning when we woke up. Lord, we give you thanks for those who contribute to the ministry of St. Mark's United Methodist Church through their resources, their time, their talent, their service, their prayers, and their witness. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. And we are so grateful for the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Receive this blessing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace to love and serve your Lord by loving and serving your neighbor. Amen.